Middlesex just about shaded the opening day of their LV County Championship fixture at Uxbridge against Warwickshire in spite of much altering spells from all-rounder Chris Wokes and Chris Wright. Middlesex were given the opportunity to bat as for once Jim Trout had inserted after winning the toss, a sure sign that he saw something in the wicket that he liked the look of for his bowlers. Instead, Chris Rogers and Joe Denley got their side off to a solid start. They put on 41 in the first 11 overs and then Rogers on 16 edged right behind. Neil Dexter was back in the four-day game for the first time since taking a break from the captaincy for personal reasons. He too could have gone early. It was never going to be easy for him nor Denley against a Warwickshire attack with the likes of Boyd Rankin, Wokes, Ricky Clark and Jeetan Patel as well as Wright. But Denley and Dexter, two good pals who also played together at Kent, kept them all at bay for 15 overs. Then, five minutes before lunch, Clark got the ball to do just enough to trap Dexter in front for 26 at 97 for two. So, on reflection, it had been a balanced morning in Uxbridge, but the afternoon, for the most part, belonged to Middlesex, with Darwin Milan now joining Denley. Denley played a fine knock, going to his 50 20 minutes after the break with a typically neat flick off his pads. He'd been at the crease for 95 deliveries and had struck nine fours at this point. Not everything he hit went right off the middle. This edge, indeed, off Rankin flew so far that it went for six. Milan has been in some fine form latterly in the one-day game and he now took that into the LV County Championship. Middlesex were probably still reeling a little from losing in a low-scoring game to Durham last week and Milan looked determined to put that episode to the back of his mind. There, they'd failed to knock off 118 to win that game but these two had now taken their side way past that for the loss of only two wickets this time on a pitch, admittedly, that was very different and gave the batsmen some hope at least. Milan's innings was a picture and his deserved half-century arrived before T with a neatly placed cut shot. That gave him his ninth four in an innings thus far lasting 84 deliveries. It looked as if this pair were going to bat through the session with Denley hooking Clark for a six on his way to 95. A third hundred of the season was on the cards until Denley was surprisingly trapped in front by Darren Maddy, the most used of the Warwickshire bowlers. The medium pacer bowled a very tight line for much of his spell, but Milan was quickly onto anything which was just a fraction offline, as he now looked to see if he could go one better than Denley and secure a three-figure score. He was given the opportunity courtesy of a wide half volley from Wright, which he struck for his 14th four to take him to 100 for the first time this summer at the 15th attempt. It had occupied 162 balls and it was a splendid knock. His dismissal was at odds with the rest of his innings though. His 172nd delivery was one he horribly misjudged and his decision to leave it alone backfired when it rattled his stumps. He was gone for 106 and it was a moment which turned the game. In the next over, John Simpson gloved a pull-off Wokes behind to be well held by Tim Ambrose. And next ball, Wokes dug one in to have Gareth Bird caught in the slips by Clark. Three wickets had fallen for the addition of only one run and after another four had been scored, Owen Morgan edged a drive off right behind to go for an uncharacteristically patient 19. From 285 for three, Middlesex had slipped to 290 for seven and Warwickshire were now on top, but they couldn't remove either Ollie Rayner nor Toby Rowland-Jones in the remaining half an hour. So Middlesex will resume on the second morning on 324 for seven, the kind of total that they may have been pleased with after being put in, but will perhaps be disappointed with given where they were at one point. The second day will be one of interest for these sides and the other title hopefuls.